blessed is God, who loves all creation. God's love has no exceptions. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, saying together, Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the book of Siraj. The beginning of human pride is to forsake the Lord. The heart has withdrawn from its maker. For the beginning of pride is sin, and the one who clings to it pours out abominations. Therefore, the Lord brings upon them unheard of calamities and destroys them completely. The Lord overthrows the thrones of rulers and enthrones the lowly in their place. The Lord plucks up the roots of the nations and plants the humble in their place. The Lord lays waste the lands of the nations and destroys them to the foundations of the earth. He removes some of them and destroys them and erases the memory of them from the earth. Pride was not created for human beings or violent anger for those born of women. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's children. We'll read Psalm 112, breaking at the asterisk. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord. And have great life in their descendants. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house. And their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. It is good for them to be generous in lending. And to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rulers, rumors. Their heart is established and will not shrink. 
They have given freely to the poor. And their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. The desires of the wicked will perish. A reading from Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to, good, to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May God's word be spoken and only God's word be heard. Amen. Usually when Jesus tells parables, they're kind of mystical, but these are really prescriptive, aren't they, today? He's talking about the way that we come at life in the what we consider natural hierarchies of society. <clears throat> we were all raised thinking that climbing the ladder of success is the norm, right? That we're supposed to get every advantage we can and try to elbow out the next guy so that we can get ahead. I kind of want to walk us through three different ways to look at that assumption. The first is that that is normal. That is the way of life. In chapter 13 in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus was confronting this attitude of privilege just by being born of the people of Israel. There was already this assumption that by being born into the house of Israel, people were already God's chosen. They didn't have to do anything, really, for salvation. But he was saying in chapter 13 that they would be surprised. There would be a time of weeping and gnashing of teeth when they would see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God 
and you yourselves thrown out. And people will come from east and west and north and south to eat in the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is already saying, you might want to think twice about this attitude that there's a natural hierarchy and the chosen are at the top as God's people. And we hear in this passage from Sirach today that there's something called pride that removes us from being close to God, our maker. There's pride and selfishness. There are things that cause us to ignore the needs of other people. And that can leave a path of devastation in our wake. So we could look at hierarchy as normal and acceptable, but beware. Climbing the ladder can be dangerous. Being proud of ourselves can separate us from each other and from God. Especially if we become arrogant and think that we don't need others or that we are better than other people. And we know that that happens all the time. There are a lot of separations among humans in our world. It also happens when we think that we're more important than ecosystems or other creatures. But Jesus knows that there is no part of God's creation that is greater or lesser. We are all manifestations of God's love in different forms in this world. Some of you may know that I'm on a softball team. We call it old lady softball. <laughs> my, my main theme that I shout is anything can happen. <laughs> Just keep running. <laughs> But this week, we were asked to fill out a form for the most valuable player on our team, and there was a grumbling on the bench. Nobody wanted to do it. So like, that's, that's a terrible idea. Why are we doing this? We need everybody on the team. And I thought, yes! That's why I like being part of this team. And I feel the same way here at St. David's. There's no most valuable player. We know that everybody brings their gifts and shares them to the best of their abilities. And this is what I think we call a healthy equality. And it comes by a sense of humility, and not humility that's competitive, right? I mean, you've probably been in situations where people are taking that attitude of hierarchy and flipping it, right? I mean, even the disciples were like, oh, you know, let me be the most humble. Paul is always saying things like, you know, I'm the chief of all sinners, right? Like. I'm the worst of them all. But humility, not as self-deprecation, can be a source of truth and wisdom. It can be a humility knowing that we're made of the same stuff. That nothing can really separate us because we are all part of God's creation. And then there's a third way to look at it too which I think is this thing we call living the way of love. And also in the Gospel of Luke, this is very early in the Gospel of Luke, I think you're familiar with these words. God has shown mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. The Magnificat, Mary's song, the very beginning of the Gospel of Luke, the writer is already setting out this idea that comes into Jesus' parable today. And I, I don't think they're really parables when he's telling you what to do. <laughs> Invite the poor and the hungry to your table. But this is a way of looking at this idea of hierarchy, equality, humility, in a sense of being proactive. I read something really compelling this week from Melissa Blaine Sevier, 
She's a blogger who writes a blog called The Contemplative Viewfinder. And Melissa wrote this, if you are one of those people who thinks you deserve the best place at the banquet, think again. You may need to be humbled. And if you are one of those people who thinks, or you have been told, that you only deserve the lowest place at the banquet, think again. You may need to be strengthened. You may need to accept your own privileged status as a child of God. This is that Magnificat language of changing that table of hierarchy and I don't think it means to flip it upside down necessarily, but I think it means to just bring those two parts back into a healthy center. And so many of us have been told that we don't belong at the table. So many of us have believed that we were less than. And so many circumstances in life Reinforce that. So we're invited to live the way of love which refocuses all these assumptions about who belongs where. And sometimes it may be difficult news, like Jesus was saying in chapter 13 if you think you're chosen, think again. Because God's going to gather people from east and west and wherever who are living a way of love. And if you don't think you belong there, think again. Because God sees the heart of us. And we are all welcome at God's table because we are all created of God. There is no part lesser or greater. We are all manifestations of God's presence in the world. And we need to live that way of love and keep a good mindfulness of if we're getting a little bit too full of ourselves or thinking a little too less of ourselves and be able to be conscious of that with each other and to draw people in, reminding them that everyone has a place at God's table I really like the empowerment of that image. That Jesus and God are constantly working to remind us to pull those extremes in. That all of us in our deep hearts want to be closest to God, as close as possible. I think that's part of why we want to be at the head of the table, right? But God's table is round and we're all invited to it. And we gather at this table, some days feeling a little pompous and arrogant maybe, and some days feeling a little bit under the weather. But all of us are fed here, and all of us are sent out into the world to live that way of love. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being.
prayers of the people, form six. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church in Atoria, New Zealand, and Polynesia. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parishes of the Nemponset River Deanery, Trinity Church Stoughton, Epiphany Church Walpole, Emmanuel Church West Roxbury, St. John's Church Westward, and the Trustees of Donations. We also hold in prayer the people of Ukraine and all who suffer in war-torn nations throughout the world. For all people in their daily life and work, For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Alan and Gail, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For everyone on our St. David's prayer list and for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. Your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Put their trust in you. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
to be here and worship with everybody today. Um, thanks to anyone who volunteered at Amazing Grace Camp this week. I know Judy Lunston at the 8 o'clock service had been over there, and probably Lynn, and who knows? No, not this year? Okay. Um, but it, it was a camp that went really well, and the kids were fabulous, and um, glad that that ministry continues. Not a whole lot exciting this week, other than I know we're anticipating some fireworks Saturday at West Dennis Beach. In our announcements, there is not a blood drive this Tuesday. That happened last week, and it unfortunately carried over in our, our program by accident. So don't show up ready to give blood on Tuesday, nobody will be here. <laughs> um, anything else for the good of the order? All right, well, keep smiling. You know, one more week, the tourists will be headed off Cape. And yeah. Just a reminder of all kinds of opportunities to vote. Please don't say it's only the primary. Vote in the primary, especially if you've already gotten your take home ballot and it's due this week. <laughs> like me. Yes, our votes matter. Good. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. We will not be singing today because I just impaled my finger on a staple on one of our programs. Let us do this in silence. If somebody can give me please a band-aid, I would very much welcome that. Thank you. Stayed kit back there, yep, or a band aid for our staple Im impaled finger here. A okay. cappella?
May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. All praise and thanks are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join with the heavenly beings and all creation as we sing with joy. creator of all, your word has never been silent. You call the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ, dying to destroy our death, rising to restore our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with David of Wales, our patron, and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body. Let us pray. 
Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. We pray for our Eucharistic visitors who take communion to parishioners at home during the week. We send them forth bearing the gifts of God that those to whom they go may share with us in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer, and giver of life, be upon you and remain with you always. peace, to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.